Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So it's been a month since I started glazing. So my work table has been left like this for over a month now since I think I started in November 8th and then I got sick for two weeks. So I cannot come back here and then we've been busy for the other two weeks. So for now, let's get back to glazing. So I'm going to glaze 10 mugs of the Northern Light combination. That is just the combination of obsidian, smoky merlot, seaweed, and indigo float. This is how the combination is going to look like after firing. So the inside, I usually do obsidian and smoky merlot, using the obsidian as a base. Sometimes I only use obsidian, sometimes I only use smoky merlot. I am just going to show the process on how I do it on the outside of the mug. Since for the inside, it's up to you on what liner you're going to use. You can use the glaze as I've mentioned. I'm going to start with the obsidian as my base. I usually glaze the bottoms of my mug, so I'm going to use a smaller, thinner brush to glaze the bottom. What I do with the bottoms is I just put two thin coats of obsidian and another two thin coats of the smoky merlot and then seaweed, and that's it. But if you don't trim the bottom of your mugs, don't glaze it because that's going to be stuck on the on the shelves. I just love doing it. It just gives a little surprise when you lift the mug. But anyway, it's just personal preference. So after glazing the bottom, I can start with the outside of the mug. I don't know for you guys, but I just find it easier for me to start from the outside. And I usually hold my mug or place my hand on the inside of the mug so I can easily rotate it. But it all depends on what works for you and what's not working. Because what works for me might not work for you, right? After the first coat has dried, I am going to apply the, the second coat. And after that, I am going to show you on how I apply the third coat. So I am done with two coats of the obsidian on the outside of the bug. So for the third coat, I am only going to put it like halfway because the upper half part, it's going to be layered by other glazes. So I guess I can get away for just two coats. 
but I did some experimenting before wherein I just did two coats on the bottom part that is the very visible part you can almost see like the clay so I want the very thick obsidian on the bottom part so that it's going to be good like this one for example so these are two coats of obsidian on the whole outside but for the third coat I only applied it halfway the blue part that you're seeing there that is the indigo float overlapping the third coat of the obsidian that I put I want the solid black at the bottom half of the mug that's why I put three coats because I did two coats before but it's almost showing the clay underneath and if I'm going to put three coats of obsidian up to the rim or up to the top the seaweed is going to show up as a very dark almost blue green color so in order for me to get the bright green from the seaweed I only do two coats of obsidian and I'm going to do four coats of the seaweed. So two coats of obsidian on the inside has been done. Now I'm going to do my smoky merlot. Still I'm gonna start on glazing the bottom of the mug. So there's two coats of obsidian in here and I'm gonna top it off with smoky merlot. Then I get a bigger brush for my inside. And I did switch back to the smaller brush to do the rim. So three coats of smoky merlot. Now I'm going to put seaweed. So for this one, what works for me is to put four coats. To get that bright, at least brighter green that I want, I put four coats instead of three. So after the four coats of seaweed has been dried, I am now applying the indigo float at the or below the seaweed. So I'm applying the indigo float overlapping the seaweed. Sometimes to make the glazing faster, I apply the smoky merlot on top and then I am going to estimate where I put the indigo float. So I am applying the smoky merlot and the indigo float all at the same time so that after both were dried I can just apply the seaweed 
of the middle, like in between the two. But for this time, since I'm doing other things anyway, I just applied it separately, or I waited for the seaweed to dry before I did the indigo float. That's it for this video, and I still got a lot of mugs to glaze. This is just 10 mugs to be put at the middle shelf, so I don't even know when I am going to be finished glazing to fill up the kiln. So I guess I am going to see you guys when I'm going to unload the kiln. My result can be different from yours because of the clay you are using, the temperature you're firing your mugs at. I'm firing at cone 6, sometimes it gets to a hot cone 6, and you might be firing at cone 5. It takes a lot of testing before we get the results that we want. But anyway, this is just a guide for those who are at the lost right now and don't know how to glaze their mugs. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.